Hello. Oh my God, damn, this lighting though. That's a little bit better. My face is just gonna... <laughs> Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. <laughs> uh, my name is Trey. I do a bunch of videos on personal finance. I recently posted this video of me doing a rant on my situation in terms of where I'm at in my career um, with my W-2 job and how I want to transition out of that and, and kind of become my own girl boss, if you will. Comments were all very, very nice um, and seemed to enjoy this kind of non-scripted type format. So I figured I would just make another one of those, um, but on a more positive note. Because the reality is, like some of you mentioned in the comments, I am in a very good position financially. Um, I made a lot of progress this year, um, being 2021. Without a doubt, the best year for me financially and career-wise. So I'm going to take this video to talk about my successes throughout 2021, and just how far I've come since the beginning of this journey. So if you're into that type of stuff, um, give this video a thumbs up, um, hit that little dingy subscribe button. Also, I am drinking a beer because drinking helps with like just kind of talking, flowing. So cheers if you're drinking at home. Okay, we have about 15 goals to get through. So let's just start this off. Um, the first goal that I hit in January of 2021 this year was achieving a positive net worth. If you're new here, I was primarily starting this channel to go through my debt-free journey while working at this sales job for a tech startup that I have since left, which I really disliked, but uh, more on that later. I got to a point in January of this year where I finally finally dug myself out of debt just enough to reach a positive net worth. That was very exciting and a very empowering way to start the new year. The second goal that I want to mention isn't actually exactly tied to finance uh, or career so much. The second goal that I achieved was starting YouTube. I believe I posted my first video in January of this year. That was very exciting. I love sharing my journey. I love sharing some tips. Goal number three is starting my new job. I landed a new job in April. Um, so I went from working a sales job in a tech startup to working a customer experience or kind of UI UX role within a media startup. I was on the phone all the time with providers for my last job and it was honestly terrible. <laughs> Just to be quite frank, uh, it was very energy consuming work for me. I'm an introvert. And so having to do that was just very exhausting and, and very, very hard work for me. So moving into a more strategic role as opposed to kind of brute force like sales was, was very exciting for me and has set me up um, into a career of UX research that is not only very interesting to me and ties into my degree, which is in psychology and research in psychology, um, but also is great for earning potential right now. Like some of those UXR jobs run from like 100 to 150 grand. So I think that I'm definitely on the right path now. So that was super exciting to land that role in April. Kind of layered into that goal as well is having increased my salary by $8,000. For the time I left my sales role, I was making around $57,000 a year. And my starting contract was for $65,000 a year. My new employer with about a guaranteed $5,000 bonus, almost around like 70. So definitely increased by eight K, but potentially increased by 13K. This next goal isn't as sexy, but I opened my own Roth IRA in May. And that was because I wanted to transfer the money from my Roth 401ks for my previous job just into my own independent account because I figured I'm young. I still might be job hopping for a while since job hopping has been the best technique at increasing my income so far. I figured I might be hopping around more in the next like five to 10 years. So I just want to have my own own separate Roth IRA where I can dump retirement savings into as opposed to having it attached to an employer. So I opened my Roth IRA and since it has grown to about $10,000, um, a lot of that, again, was rollover for my previous employers, but I believe I've put in like 2K myself around there. I've since stopped because I still opened a Roth 401k with my new employer and I'm donating there, donating, that's not the right word. I'm contributing there to get up to the company match, but everything that I'm saving for retirement outside of that, I dump into my personal Roth IRA. All right, this next one is the most exciting one. It's the reason I started my channel. In May of 2021, I finally became debt-free. 
I paid off all of my student loans in May. I had like 4,000 some dollars left. I actually captured on video the moment I became debt free. So if you're interested in that too, I have a video on that. That was such a liberating feeling. I mean, at the time it didn't feel real. Like the actual moment of the call didn't feel like real. Like I had kind of this like existential, like, oh my God, like the burden is gone. But because I had been living my life kind of the same way for two and a half years with like just building debt into my budget, it didn't register, um, especially because afterwards I kept saving the same amount that I was paying off debt with. So it actually didn't really help my budget at all. Um, it really didn't feel like it was real because the money that had been being thrown away, I still wasn't gaining access to even after I was done throwing it away towards debt, that's being tucked away in a savings account now. So honestly, in terms of like my lifestyle, it, it really hasn't changed that much, but that weight is definitely off my shoulders. Knowing that I can afford pretty much anything that I would want in my life at this point, besides of course, total financial freedom. Like how much more can you really ask for? It's like such a blessing. And I'm so glad that I had the plan to pay off my debt and went through with it in the course of two years, especially during the pandemic when there was nothing else to do anyway, was a great use of that specific time in my life and in our history uh, as a civilization, I guess. There's no better time to, to save money and pay off debt when we couldn't really spend it going out. So um, yeah, that was a huge, huge milestone in my financial journey. All right, this next one kind of strays more on the personal side, but it's fun, so I wanted to include it. In July, I actually made my own, not video game, my own in-life board game, I guess you could say. Fun fact about me, I loved watching all of those really cheesy reality shows, the competition reality shows specifically that launched on the sci-fi channel in the mid 2000s. So this includes the shows Chase, uh, Haunted Mansion, um, maybe Fear Factor played during that time on that channel, probably did. Uh, like all those types of shows I was really into. And so I wanted to recreate my favorite one, which is the first one I mentioned, Chase. And that's where you have a bunch of people running around a, they call it in real life game board, but it's basically just like a map, like a location, a city, for example, a couple city blocks or like a farm. These people are running around and just trying to stay alive. Um, and the way that they die or get eliminated is they have a bunch of of hunters that go around the board and try and chase them. And if they tag them, essentially they're like dead or like out of the game. So I created my own board. I gave away a cash prize of $1,000. Yes, $1,000, which seems crazy. But again, I was so used to saving that money for debt that that was like literally nothing because I was saving $1,500 a month to pay towards debt. So $1,000 for this one thing was only two thirds of my budget for that. So in reality, it was um, not a big deal at all for me, which again, huge blessing. It was so cool to be able to take a concept that I had from my childhood and have the funds and the ability and the freedom to drive that and like make that a reality as an adult. It was kind of like a just a nod to my past self and, and something that was really fun for my friends to do as like a, a bonding activity. And also it was nice to be able to like give back to my friends monetarily. All right, goal number seven. Also in July of this year, I got my own apartment. Um, So this is where I'm filming right now. I'll try and like show around a little bit. Basically, yeah, this is what I'm filming on. It's literally the Harry Potter collection, so. Um, yeah, but I got my own apartment in Baltimore, Maryland. I'm originally from Frederick, Maryland, which is like an hour west. <laughs> yes, that way's west. Um, an hour west of here. And I just wanted to be able to live in a city by myself. Um, DC was a little too expensive. It's been great living here. I need to like work on establishing my own community within this city, but I have friends that are like a half hour-ish out. Then again, a huge blessing to have my own place to come back to every single day and know that I'm not depending on literally anyone besides myself and my employer, obviously. I just feel like it's kind of, you know, a coming of age thing as an adult to be able to support yourself, um, obviously, in your own place. So yeah, it's been wonderful. I still really wanna do like a, what X amount of dollars can afford you in Baltimore video or like a, my first apartment like video, something like that to celebrate moving here and hitting that milestone. But the only thing is that my walls are super white. They're still like, that's where I work by the way. There's still like so much that I wanna do like with this space. I just don't really have any decorations. So I've never really had the motivation to film like a video of my environment. Like it's clean and it's fine. 
but it's just not like, it just doesn't have my personality yet. So I was just kind of afraid of showing it, if that makes sense. That video will definitely come at some point, even if it's before I actually buy decorations for the place. Whew. All right, and this next goal, somewhat controversial. I've already made a video about it, but uh, another goal that I hit this July was actually being on the Dave Ramsey show and being able to share my story with other people that are going through paying off debt and going through a tough financial situation. Crazy and surreal because the reason that I even learned guys that this was possible was through Dave Ramsey. And I 100% attribute the start of my journey to him and I attribute part of my motivation um, being instilled by him, honestly, by like the fear that that was instilled in me by him, which like is not the best tactic in my opinion, but it was very effective. Being able to bookend my journey the way that it started in a sense was just honestly kind of poetic. Um, it was really cool to be on the show. Even though again, I kind of stray from his political views. I've made a whole video on this. Him and his platform are very homophobic and don't offer the same courses to like people that are in the LGBT community. Like it is legitimate discriminatory and I'm not the first person to even make a video on that um, like there's tons of evidence on there it's already obvious from the way that they literally preach on their show but yeah they're just not uh, very progressive uh, folks and honestly a little bit dangerous to probably um, people of my community. So that is a whole moral thing that I was trying to get over by my decision to be on the show, but I ultimately still decided to do it because one, I don't know many gay voices that are on that platform and I wanted to be one. And two, it's one of the only platforms out there that allows common people to talk about their story with like debt freedom. Anyway, I have a whole video on that too, what it was like to be on that show. So if you wanna know more about that specific goal, go on there. Um, but I'm still very proud uh, of the moment that I had on uh, the Dave Ramsey show. Okay, this next goal is career related. This is the first time ever that work has flown me out to do anything or meet people. My new employer, literally had me fly into our Charlotte or Raleigh office every month, like once every month from July to like November. They even wanted me to come back this month in December, but I said no, <laughs> because I've just been going so many times and I needed to kind of draw a line. It's crazy that they're spending money on a flight for me, a hotel for me, and that they're just investing so much like time, energy, resources, emotional energy, like into developing me as a people leader like in this company. So um, that's very, very exciting to me. And I'm very happy that um, I'm finally in a place that respects me enough to do that. Big moves again for my career, the possibility of actually making a decent income from my W2 job, even though that's kind of what fueled part of the whole reason that I started this channel and this journey. There's no harm in making a lot of money from your W-2 job. And of course we all wanna be happy from it, even if it's not our long-term plan to our kind of life design. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm very happy that I'm enjoying it and that they're investing time and energy into me. Even if a W-2 isn't in my long-term plans of uh, just what I wanna do with my life. So that's still a, a major, major win. This one kind of piggybacks off the last one, but in terms of my career, this is the first job that I'm actually in charge of like a program. I'm in charge of the experimentation program for both quantitative and qualitative research for UX for specific domains within my company's portfolio. It's just the first time where I have been trusted to be the owner of an entire process for an entire product. And that is really exciting to me because it gives me the opportunity to actually make a difference, get stuff done without having to go through a bunch of red tape. So it gives me really good experience for my career in an environment where people like trust me. So it's just kind of crazy. I've never actually had that experience in a workplace before and been trusted to that extent. So it's really exciting that I'm finally in a space like that. That brings us to drum roll, please. Hitting a $25,000 net worth. 
I hit this last month actually, and that's broken down into roughly $12,000 invested in the stock market, $7,000 in a long-term savings fund that is not yet complete, but we're more than halfway there, like $1,000 like in the bank, and then $6,000, which is attributed to the value of my car. For this next one, it's kind of incidental, um, and I already mentioned part of it, but basically my goal that I achieved was actually having an emergency expense pop up that did not break the bank or completely throw a wrench into my plans. And that was the breaking down of my car. My check engine light came on at the same time I needed like an oil change at the same time that I needed to get my brakes fixed. And all of that turned out to be like, it was like $400 for the brakes. It was like $300 for the engine diagnostic test plus the actual fixing of the issue. And then it was like $50 for like my oil. So the whole thing turned out to be like roughly $800. And luckily because I had sinking funds set up, I was able to put the brunt of that into my sinking funds, which meant that it only cost me a couple hundred dollars for all of those things instead of like near a thousand, which really didn't disrupt my budget that much. Honestly, I think like everyone talks about, oh, you know, unexpected things are gonna come up. So you need to have sinking funds. And um, I had been saving for it. And I was just really kind of glad that like something like this happened just so that I could see the immediate impact of having those funds available for the not fun kind of bullshit life things that come up only halfway through my debt journey $800 would have made me so upset it meant that I wouldn't have been able to move my debt number down that month and when you are fighting an uphill battle like that just feels so horrible whereas me saying okay well I can't exactly save you know $1,500 this month but I can save like 500 that does not feel as bad as is not being able to take some weight off of your shoulders. So just being able to see the kind of emotional impact of that has been energizing. All right, I lied. I don't actually have 15 and there's only two left. The second to last one, I've touched on on a couple other ones, but basically it's transitioning into a career that both will meet my financial needs and also my interests moving forward. Just a few short months ago, I didn't think this was possible. Well, I guess now it's almost a year ago, but back when I was in that other like sales job, I honestly thought that having a nine to five was never going to suit my needs. But working at the company that I do now with the people that I do now, I realized that I just hadn't found the right fit and that I got really lucky, honestly. I got super lucky to be hired by the company that I work for now. Like, yes, I'm awesome. Yes, I have a great skill set. And yes, I deserve it. But, you know, like, it's honestly kind of a crapshoot sometimes, especially when you're young in your career. You're not exactly sure where you're going to end up because. When you're just starting out, honestly, money matters the most. Like you need to be able to support yourself. Honestly, if you're waiting to take opportunities that just like fit you better, like honestly, you're either like super privileged or can like already have enough money to support yourself and like make that decision. So, which is just privilege anyway. So it's been kind of wild to come from a place of like not knowing that, right? Like not saying I wasn't privileged. Like my parents helped pay for my college even though I still have loans, but like just coming from a place where I didn't think my career would ever support my own interests while also monetizing me fairly to a place where that is the, kind of the reality of what's happening now is kind of crazy. Yes, I have to do things for work that I don't like. And yes, sometimes that happens when other things in my life are going to shit, which is essentially what my last rant video was about. But just taking this moment to step back, like there is real opportunity here with the job that I have now and, and the career that I have now. Like even if I don't stay at this company forever, the skills that I'm learning here and putting into practice does wonders for my resume and can launch a career in UX. Again, that pays like 120 to 150 grand if you're working for like a, a good company. So I only make like half of that right now, but it's just kind of crazy um, that I've landed into this role. I'm incredibly, incredibly thankful for one, myself, for... <laughs> sticking through this like debt journey and even in the darkest times making time to fight for myself to like 
you know, put in those applications, keep updating my LinkedIn, learning what search engine optimization was so that I could optimize my LinkedIn for keywords that certain HR and recruiters were looking for. That's ultimately how I landed the past two of my jobs, even the sales job that I hated. It still increased my income from 37K to 52K, and it's all just because I had certain like project management keywords in my profile that they were looking for. And retweet about the job that I have currently. I had the words customer experience in my profile. A lot of new companies like work with software like LinkedIn and like media companies like LinkedIn and use targeted keywords to search for talent. I don't want to put too much stock in this W2 job because at the end of the day, like I still believe that the nine to five is not for me. It works for right now because I'm getting my foot in the door and I'm actually doing work that I enjoy. But I think that Trey does at the end of the day need to be his own boss and not depend on someone else for income. So I still definitely want to make that transition in my career are still very much going to be a focus of this channel. It just might be that in addition to some side hustles, in addition to planning that eventual transition, I make some pretty big W2 career advancements as well, um, which I'm happy to share here. And the last goal that I have for you guys is I started rock climbing. This is completely random, completely personal. It's been really exciting to have a sport that is new to me, um, challenging, and also just so friendly. Like the climbing community is so nice. Everyone that I've met is so supportive. The gym that I go to is LGBT friendly, like they have pride flags everywhere. They have LGBT nights. So you climb with like fellow queer people. Um, it is kind of all encompassing. So as long as you fit into that queer umbrella, it's fine. It's not like they have like a gay or lesbian or trans night. Um, it's more just like, or bi night, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to contribute to bi erasure. Crazy that they even have that. Like a gym having a queer night, maybe it's more common than I know, but I don't know of any gyms like that. So the whole thing is just really cool. As a kid growing up, I kind of like separated my identity from like a jock, um, which I associated a jock with just like fitness in general, which was not fair. I thought that like working out was not for me. I thought sports wasn't for me. I did track in high school only because my parents forced me into it. And so there was this resentment towards them and like towards that sport. Um, so I just kind of associated like working out and like being fit as not a part of my identity. And then I really combated that a couple of years ago when I started figure skating and kind of like embracing that, realized that, you know, like there are a lot of ways that I can keep fit and active and work that into my identity. Like it's, it's really dumb to think that like, you know, I'm a human and I have a body and I need to take care of that body and taking care of that body, one part of it is fitness and denying myself that just because of a box that I was putting myself in is like tragic to myself. Like that's just stupid. Figure skating really helped me out of that. And um, I kind of transitioned out of figure skating just because that's a really expensive sport and there's not a lot of resources. Whereas climbing is much more affordable much more friendly. But anyway, those are all of my goals that I reached in 2021. Again, it's been a crazy, amazing year. I've accomplished some awesome stuff. And even when I'm feeling down the dumps, like I was kind of in my last video, I have you guys to remind me to bring myself up and remind myself that in the big picture, I have made like 2000% improvement in the past year. And that when things kind of go to shit, it's always helpful to take a step back and realize how far you've come. So remember again to like this video, subscribe if you want to learn more about my goals, excited to share a 2022 careers, finances, and personal goals video. That'll probably be coming out in January and will line up closely with when I'm done with my emergency fund. So then I can start talking about how I'm changing my model um, of saving to investing and exactly what that looks like, as well as plans for a house. I am probably gonna start saving for a house. And until next time, like, I love you. Thank you so much. I've gotten a lot of love and hate on this channel specifically for some videos that I've made on uh, apartments in the DC area and for my time on the Dave Ramsey show. It's been awesome that the algorithm has picked that up. Um, you guys have left awesome actual good feedback um, and some hate comments, but like we ignore those ones, honey. I have seen my subscriber count reach 100 officially. Um, I think I'm at 108, even though I was just at 80 like two weeks ago, which is crazy. Like, I know that that doesn't seem like much, but honestly, guys, it means so much to me that you are just organically finding my channel, liking the content and subscribing. Like, 
that is literally all I want. Just thank you so much for, for being here and, and participating in this discussion and in my life. It, it really does mean a lot to me and um, I love you for it. So thank you so much. Um, have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you next time uh, for the next video. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.